The best division in the NFL at the moment is undoubtedly the NFC North. 2024 marks the first time that every team in any division has four or more wins through six weeks in the modern era, with the North keeping a frightening pace that should put the entire NFC on notice as they could easily snap up all three wildcard spots. And I mean, hell, they've got it all. From redemption arcs to generational hype, this division has everything. Not only producing winning football, but also the most entertaining games of the young 2024 season. And I mean, as crazy as it sounds, that's all with only one divisional matchup played so far. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a deep dive into why the NFC North is an absolute bloodbath right now. Let's start with the Windy City where, undoubtedly, of course, Caleb Williams has dominated most of the news headlines because, well, it's Caleb Williams. His minimal involvement in Chicago's preseason games kept expectations sky high, and while he did manage a win in his debut, it spoke more to the Titans' deficiencies than Caleb's talent. He was then massacred in a loss against the Texans, sacked seven times for 40 yards while throwing two picks and no scores. A loss against the Colts did show improvement as he passed for 363 yards on 52 attempts for two touchdowns and two picks, though the Bears got back to winning ways the following week against the Rams. But now the two performances that we've seen Caleb put out on just the past two weeks against the Panthers and then the Jags the following week really kind of show the level of play that we were expecting to see him that he would do or just was accustomed to doing at USC. Throwing for 304 yards and two touchdowns against Carolina and most recently 226 yards and four passing touchdowns in London against Jacksonville seems to show that the Bears offense is starting to click with their number one overall pick. DJ Moore has been the most productive with tight end Cole Komet just behind him, enjoying the best start ever to his season, ranking second among tight ends for receiving touchdowns and third in receiving yards. Romo Dunze has the fifth most receiving yards among rookies, while veteran Keenan Allen came to life against Jacksonville with the first two receiving touchdowns of the season. While their run game hasn't exactly set the world alight, DeAndre Swift and Roshan Johnson are certainly capable backs and have shown steady improvement as they grow into the season, which seems to be the story of this offense just overall. The Bears' biggest strength, though, without a doubt, is their defense. They have not allowed over 21 points this season, the fifth fewest in the NFL with 14 takeaways, good for second best in the entire league. Eric Washington's unit picked up right where they left off at the end of last season with a strong secondary that has seven interceptions through six weeks. Two of those came from pro bowler Jalen Johnson, who jointly leads the team with three tackles for loss. Well on his way to proving he's worth the four-year, $76 million extension he signed in the offseason. Free agency addition Kevin Byard has also delivered, while second-year defensive tackle Jervon Dexter leads the line with four sacks and 11 quarterback hits. And while their run defense was a concern coming into the season, the Bears have ranked 10th in rushing yards allowed and are looking to establish themselves as an elite defense in 2024. And now look, I know that one of the kind of arguing points that you can say is that their schedule kind of is weak. They are fifth weakest in the entire NFL, so the opponents that they're going to be playing compared to just the rest of the division is not the same so that is a little bit of an argument point that you can try to put against the bears but nonetheless they're still out there performing they do have a tough run looking forward but with an ever improving caleb williams under center and one of the stronger defenses in the league bears fans can feel confident heading into their bye week now on the other side of michigan's lower peninsula the reigning division champion detroit lions certainly have not lost any step mastermind by offensive coordinator ben johnson they have the highest scoring offense in the nfl thanks in large part to the incredible run rushing duo of Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. The two have combined for over 1,000 total yards, 10 touchdowns, and about 70 yards per game apiece. Montgomery shown with two rushing touchdowns and a vengeful 47-9 demolition of the Cowboys in Week 6, helping Detroit to its first win over Dallas in 11 years, handing them their worst home loss since 1988. Gibbs then had two of his own and yet another high-scoring win over the Seahawks in Week 4 before their bye. Behind the best offensive line in the league according to PFF, these two will be running a riot on any anybody you put in front of them. And I think honestly what's truly remarkable about both of those running backs is their selflessness and willingness to let each other shine when they're having a particularly good game. Something made possible by their chemistry off the field. Montgomery's powerful running style is a necessary contrast to Gibbs' raw 4-3 speed, providing the Lions the luxury of using either depending on their strengths or weaknesses of each opponent. And honestly one of the most surprising people this year from just any team in the NFL has been Jamison Williams as he has already surpassed his career best tallies in receiving yards and touchdowns 
touchdowns as the Lions have finally found a way to maximize his ridiculous speed. Amon Ross St. Brown and tight end Sam Laporta haven't quite started as hot as in previous seasons, yet their ability to influence games is undeniable. Jared Goff has been the constant under center once again, despite a suboptimal start throwing four picks in his first three games and failing to take care of the ball in a tight 20-16 loss against the Bucks. But overall, Goff has the third best completion percentage in the league, going 18 for 18, which is just insane, and a 42 to 29 win against Seattle, becoming only the second quarterback in NFL history to throw over 10 passes without any incompletion. And now, pretty much any discourse that this Lions defense did have has completely shifted, especially after the Cowboys game and the performance that they put out there. With pass rusher Marcus Davenport already suffering a season ending injury in week three, the Lions' most important player, Aiden Hutchinson, went down with a brutal leg injury, which will surely keep him out through the rest of the season. Aaron Glenn's defense is among the top five in blitz percentage, which is something that we could see change given their depleted pass rush unit. Surprisingly enough, too, there are rumors that the Lions might be looking to trade for Max Crosby, who is also a Michigan born and would be a great addition, but the entire team seemed to take a huge emotional hit in light of Hutchinson going down. I mean, the league leader in sacks will no doubt be hard to replace, but the Lions have a remarkable defense everywhere else. Defensive backs Kirby Joseph and Brian Branch have seven interceptions between them, second and third in the league respectively. And I mean, honestly, they have been the heart and soul of the Lions secondary, helping them to a respectable eighth fewest points conceded in the league. Detroit is yet to play a division rival, but with a showdown at Minnesota ahead of them in week seven, it should be an interesting Sunday in the Twin Cities. And now on the other side of Lake Michigan, we have the Green Bay Packers who honestly, they've already kind of overcome their fair share of adversity in the early part of the season with Jordan Love going down with that scary knee injury. And as crazy as it sounds, they are right back in the Super Bowl conversation and just being in contention for the Super Bowl. An injury to Jordan Love in his first game since signing a four-year $220 million contract wasn't a promising start as his backup Malik Willis was fairly uninspiring in the last quarter of their loss against the Eagles, but Willis ended up steering the Packers to victories against the Colts and the Titans before relinquishing the reins upon Love's return against Minnesota. I mean, an epic fourth quarter comeback just came up short of winning the first divisional matchup there, but the Packers offense proved that they can still be explosive. Jaden Reed has been the standout with 442 yards and three touchdowns, but the spoils have been shared for the most part among Green Bay's youthful receiving corps. Dontavian Wicks and Titan Tucker Craft both have three touchdowns, while Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson have two scores apiece. Their strength has been in their ability to use a multitude of weapons in the passing game, with Jordan Love ranking second in passing touchdowns with 12, despite missing two games, while also ranking second in passing yards per game with 282.8. Their running game has left something to be desired up until now, as they have three rushing touchdowns, only one of which has come from a running back. Josh Jacobs hasn't quite been the best this season, yet to find the form he had a few years ago with the Raiders. He has only broken the 100 yard mark once this season, and will be looking to prove he's worth the hefty contract forked out to him in the offseason. I mean, honestly, the sticking point for Green Bay has been their defense in the past, but this year it's been the complete opposite and their defense has been one of the best in the league. Safety Xavier McKinney leads the league in interceptions with five so far this season, while Jair Alexander has two of his own, including a pick six against the Titans. They have forced a league high 17 turnovers and allowed the eighth fewest rushing yards with Devontae Wyatt leading the defensive line with three sacks, five quarterback hits, and six tackles for loss. And I mean, honestly, they play complimentary football as the pack lead the league with a turnover differential of plus nine. Doing all of this while cornerback Eric Stokes has been unable to replicate his rookie form is impressive, but there is certainly cause for concern when they come up against stronger sides. Jordan Love led them to two wins against an injury-ridden Rams in a woeful pass defense in Arizona, while he threw three interceptions against the suffocating Vikings defense and is tied for the second most picks thrown this season. Turnovers will be the name of the game for LaFleur's men on both sides of the ball, but one thing is for certain, they will be an entertaining watch either way. Heading further west now though, we have the division topping Minnesota Vikings. And honestly, I don't think that's a sentence that really many people thought they were going to be saying coming into this season. Like, I mean, seriously, imagine somebody telling you two months ago that Sam Darnold would be the former number one overall pick in the NFC North, hogging all of the headlines for good reasons. All of the offseason noise around Justin Jefferson's contract, Kirk Cousins leaving, and the season-ending injury to their first-round draft pick, J.J. McCarthy, had some legitimate questions being raised around the franchise. Six weeks in, though, Minnesota is the only remaining undefeated team in the NFC. The Vikings have responded to every challenge thrown their way with what may turn out to be a season-defining victory over the Niners in Week 2, firmly establishing them as a serious football team. Darnold's connection with Justin Jefferson for a 97-yard touchdown from his own end zone got the job done there before going on to land a resounding 34-7 
one victory in Houston, where he passed for four touchdowns and no picks against one of the finest defensive units in the AFC. Darnold's veteran presence and game management have helped the Vikings stay in control of their games and never going behind since the first quarter of the season. He then shone against the Packers for three touchdowns and 275 yards before faltering in the face of a very strong Jets defense, completing a measly 45% of passes for one pick and no scores. Instead, the duo of Ty Chandler and Aaron Jones stepped up instead, with the defense also playing a huge role in keeping Aaron Rodgers and company at bay. And I mean, honestly, Jones has been a massive coup for Minnesota with his impact very much felt on the ground and in the air. I mean, honestly, this is just one of the greatest strengths of the Vikings roster, I believe. Like, I mean, definitely, well, certainly there is great individual talent in Aaron Jones and Justin Jefferson, respectively. It almost seems like when one is slacking, the other one picks up the other slack and just kind of balances each other out. And I mean, honestly, that has helped with just the injury hardships that they have faced so far this season with TJ Hawkinson and Jordan Addison missing and hell, even Justin Jefferson missing out on some snaps. Like it's almost as if one aspect of the team is just completely faltering that week, a different part of the unit or just the entire team will pick up that part slack. But I think it's safe to say that no one part of the team has had a bigger influence on this team than the defense. They have forced the second most turnovers while also ranking first in hurries for 33, knockdowns in 30, and pressures with 84. The Vikings have the highest blitz rate in the NFL, which has contributed to them to ranking second in sacks while also leading the league in interceptions with 11, two of which have been returned for scores conveniently in games where the offense has struggled to get going. Under Brian Flores, this Vikings defense has become an absolute nightmare to come up against with disguised looks and timely, well-executed rotations, making them adaptable, unpredictable, and most importantly, extremely effective at penetrating the O-line. Still, the only team to win a divisional matchup with that being the Vikings host the Red Hot Lions looking to keep their unbeaten streak alive. And if they manage to do so, we can no longer call their success a surprise. Kevin O'Connell's got something serious cooking up in Minneapolis. So with four of the best all-around teams in the NFL largely yet to face off, in their divisional matchups, we might have a league-sanctioned bloodbath in the NFC North, which has been historically good this season. Personally, for me, I still see the Lions coming out on top, though. I mean, they have too much talent and pass the eye test more than any of the other three. Behind them, I could see maybe even the Bears coming in second, especially if they can pick up some statement wins in their next few games against tougher oppositions. They are on the up and are undefeated at Soldier Field so far this season, and if they can turn it into a fortress in 2024, who say they don't win those three divisional matchups? They have at home and get a wild card spot. But nonetheless, I think we are in for a hell of a ride in the NFC North. What I want to hear from you guys though is who do you think is going to win the NFC North? Give me your predictions down below. It has been a crazy season. I think by far now, at least for this season, the NFC North has taken the AFC North's title as king or just the toughest division in the NFL. Like it is just crazy how tough both of the NFC and AFC North divisions are. But as of right now, just record wise and I think team wise also, the NFC North is just far superior. Yes, in the AFC NFC North, you have the Bengals and you have the Baltimore Ravens, but right now the NFC North is supreme. But again, I want to get your guys' predictions. Which division is better, the AFC North or the NFC North? Hell, give me who you think is going to win those divisions. And if the Vikings can continue to, to just stay undefeated, which would be crazy. But as always, if you guys can, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Let's me know to keep doing more of these videos and what we want to push out on the channel. But as always, I will catch you guys in the next 